We see this happen almost periodically in the gaming industry. Something comes out and it's absolutely revolutionary, but later it's just completely obliterated by new, more refined technology. I'm referring more to the core mechanics of games rather than the graphics and other superfluous stuff like that. Take Grand Theft Auto for instance. What I'm about to say is probably going to end my entire career, but San Andreas it's fun. It's a decent game, but the core mechanics just feel so unrefined and inconsistent to the point that it's just way more fun to play GTA 5. It doesn't have as many crazy things like chainsaws and jetpacks, but the actual game mechanics feel so much more responsive and refined to the point that it's just more enjoyable to play. This kind of obsolescence seems to plague a lot of games, but it never happened to Mario 6. There have been a shitload of 3D platformers that have come out since, many of which are amazing and put a new spin on the genre, but they never made Mario 64 feel obsolete in comparison, and that is simply because the game just works. Mario 64 is one of those rare instances where they got it totally right the first time. There have been a number of 3D Mario games that have come out after Mario 64, but none of them are better. In my opinion, the closest one is Sunshine. 64 is a game that was not only revolutionary, but enduring to this day. It's almost 22 years old now, and aside from the graphics, it has not aged. Super Mario 64 DS is the complete opposite of all that. Obviously, the idea of being able to take one of the greatest video games ever made with you anywhere you go sounds like an amazing idea. And it is. But let's talk about the original game. What made it work was the new controller with the revolutionary analog stick. This made moving around in 3D space actually practical and possible to do. Now look at the DS. Now I don't know about you, but I don't see no control stick. So what are you expecting me to do? Use the touch screen? <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Damn. At least there's a control pad. A 3D platformer on a D-pad. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? The controls are supremely atrocious, at least in comparison to the original. After a while, you can sort of get used to it, but to say that it's not quite as good as the original would be extremely generous. And I don't mean generous like tipping 25% at a restaurant generous. I don't mean volunteering at a soup kitchen generous. I don't mean giving 50 bucks to a hospital for sick children generous. I mean giving away the deed to your fucking house to a random homeless person, giving away your net worth to a sad orphan, donating your penis to a guy who has a slightly smaller penis just so he can have a slightly bigger penis, and willingly becoming a human meat shield for soldiers in Afghanistan. That's how balls these controls are. You can do most of the same stuff that you can do in the original, but nowhere near as easily or consistently. Mario 64's controls are precise, fluid, and accurate. The DS version is clunky, stiff, and infuriating. Now, as I said, you can get used to it, but considering how quick and easy it was to pick up the original for the first time, it just kind of feels gross in comparison. It's not game-breaking, but it falls far short of the original. But it's not just the controls that are fucked up, they actually changed the core mechanics of the game. Now obviously they added new characters, which I'll get to later. It makes sense that they would play differently, but they also completely changed how the game actually works. One of the best examples is wall jumping. In Mario 64, the wall jumps have a sense of momentum and inertia, meaning if you tackle a wall and jump off it from a certain angle, it would actually affect your direction upon launching off the wall. In Mario 64 DS, when you jump at a wall, you just start sliding down and you always launch at an exact perpendicular 90 degree angle from the wall. That might not seem like a big deal, except it makes the game feel more restrictive about the cool stuff you can do. And considering just how apeshit people go on the original Mario 64 with wall jumps and whatnot, this seems like a huge oversight. Now take a game like Rayman 2, which was ported to every single console known to mankind. What you'll find is that every single version of the game, though the graphics may be improved or the music might be better or some of the levels are removed, like the stupid PlayStation version, the game always plays the same. Even the shitty DS version with the stupid control pad, the gameplay is still largely the same. When Nintendo was developing Ocarina of Time 3D, they consciously made the decision to leave in some of the bugs from the original version of the game on the grounds that it made the game genuinely more fun. 
Mario 64 DS, on the other hand, just threw all that shit right in the garbage. No more BLJ, no more endless staircase skip. You can't even do this anymore. It makes sense that they would iron out bugs from the game, but I think there's a difference between fixing game-breaking glitches that would harm the unsuspecting player's experience and removing shit that's just fun for professionals to mess around with. Now, to be fair, Mario 64 may have unwittingly given people just a little bit too much power. I mean, it's possible to beat the game with zero stars but I still feel as though they could have reasonably found a way to be a little bit less draconian about their glitch purge. Now, is there anything good about Mario 64 DS? Actually, yeah, there is. The graphics are better, sort of. The character models and textures are definitely improved, but because it's on a Nintendo DS screen, the resolution is even lower than the original game, if you can even comprehend that. Also, the textures have that unfiltered pixelated PlayStation 1 look. I always just found that unappealing. But aside from that, the graphics are pretty much inarguably better. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the game has four characters in total. You play not only as Mario, but also Yoshi, Luigi, and Wario. That's probably the highlight of the game. You can go through much of the game using Mario, but there are certain situations where only certain characters can get certain stars. It kind of reminds me of Donkey Kong 64, where you swap characters depending on the situation. Unfortunately, just like Donkey Kong 64, switching between characters is kind of dumb. Every time you want to change characters, you have to go to this room in the castle and walk through the door with your character's letter above it. Or if you walk into your own door, you get Yoshi. For the sake of convenience, however, they included hats for the other characters in the levels so that you can just pick up a hat and transform into them on the spot. Unfortunately, this is only temporary, and if you lose the hat for whatever reason, then you transform back. In any case, it's a bit tedious. It'd be cool if you could just swap characters on demand at certain times, but I imagine that might complicate the game more. Also, instead of the original game where you find different power-ups in these color-coded boxes, which I believe is the right way to do it, the DS version just has one box that provides a power flower that has different effects on different characters. Luigi turns invisible, Mario becomes a balloon, Wario becomes metal, and Yoshi becomes the greatest rapper of all time. He literally spits fire and will literally roast motherfuckers. As I said, I prefer the way the original game handled power-ups, but considering it added a few things, I have to give it credit. Also, the characters all have different stats. Mario is mostly well-rounded, Luigi and Yoshi have the best jump, and Wario is the strongest of all of them. This does actually make for some pretty nice variety in gameplay. Another thing this game does better than the original is that every level has seven missions instead of just six, which is awesome. Some of the levels are somewhat redesigned, which is also kinda cool. Some for the better, some not so much. It also added a number of secret levels and areas, which makes the world a little more interesting to explore. Also, the music quality sounds better than the original game. I guess the idea is that the music is pre-recorded this time instead of being MIDI instruments like in the original. It's all the same songs, mind you, but the audio quality seems noticeably improved. So this game does in fact make a number of improvements over the original, as to be expected. But is it a superior product? Absolutely not. Between the dipshit controls and the more stiff mechanics, the game is an overall inferior product. But considering it's a portable game, that's something you kinda have to expect. I think if you want to enjoy this game to its fullest, your best bet is to just put the Super Mario 64 out of your mind completely and treat this as its own independent game. Considering how much they changed and added, it's probably better that way anyhow. People have been asking me to review ROM hacks for this game, which sounds interesting. I don't imagine this game, in all its rigidity, lends itself quite as well to ROM hacks as the original game does, but perhaps I'm incorrect. And if it turns out that I'm proven wrong, well that's great. In any case, that's for another time.